All right, welcome. This is What's Cooking with Yodesh. I'm Sachin, your host today. I'm gonna teach you uh, a very simple yet very exciting recipe called burji, which is scrambled eggs in India. And it's the recipe exactly is called sexy burji, a recipe which I learned during my undergrad days in India. It's got a special element to it, which is called garlic. Not very usual in, in burji. And this will be the element making it sexy. So let's roll over the ingredients we need for this. Of course, uh, scrambled eggs, the burji, we need the eggs. Some tomatoes, cilantro, green pepper, garlic, as I said, the special ingredient, onions, paprika for the color, and some oil. So let's start up here again. Uh, what we have is the oil. We make sure that the gas is on at around low to medium high heat. And around this one at about, I would say, four to five tablespoons of oil. I do have a very, measure, very good measuring hand, so I don't need to measure it. So don't feel bad if you can do the same, but uh, this is how I roll. Uh, then we need the onions and the, uh, and the peppers. For the peppers, what I do is, always get rid of the seeds because seeds is something which is not the best part of it even though it's the spiciest part it's what not it's not something which gives the flavor the flavor is what we need and we get it from the uh, from the from the skin of the peppers itself so i'm just going to deseed them all three of them and just finally chop them in the oil By this time, your, your oil should be heating up pretty nicely, and you could kind of hear the tingling of the, and the sizzling of the uh, peppers heating up. And that's when you put it down at low. So you have the other main ingredient, which is the onions, ready as well. Preferably for this recipe, uh, you would like to have the onions between fine to medium, not too coarse. Although uh, the place where I learned this recipe was, uh, he usually used some coarse onions and it adds some different flavor, but I personally prefer it being finely chopped. The, the oil's kind of warmed up. We pump it up a little bit down to medium heat and uh, make sure that the oil, you can actually hear the uh, chilies kind of uh, tingle and you add the onions and we're gonna get the garlic and kind of cut them down finely I prefer using two knives like this versus using any other method because it really 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 finely chops them and I prefer using a big chef's knife like a santuku and a fine knife which works perfectly well for this Here you see most of the garlic is really fine. Just need to make sure all of it is done very fine as well. Take a few more swipes at it. So the whole thing looks really well done. There you go, quick, fast and easy. Remember, this was the element which makes it really good. and stir the onions a little bit so they don't burn out. And the meanwhile, start chopping your tomatoes as well. The tomatoes, I prefer them with a little coarse, unlike the onions, which, are, which needs a lot more flavor. And tomatoes, you just need them to thin down and spread the flavor and add some liquid so the onions and the rest of the ingredients don't dry up. So this is how coarse I would keep them. And uh, all you need to do now is just stir the onions back up. You notice that they're uh, getting translucent. This is around the perfect time to get the heat to a little more medium high. And at that point, you could add the garlic.
Make sure it's stored down again very well. Ah, the aroma smells really well. This is the element which makes it really special. I would have used this fresh cilantro, but I prefer using the frozen cubes. You buy these cubes, uh, I won't tell you which brand, but they're available in most supermarkets. You buy these cubes and once you use them, you can actually reuse them by buying your old cilantro or your own garlic and keeping them in these. And the, uh, the useworthiness and the value is just amazing because you don't have to make sure you have fresh ingredients anytime because you have harvested the fresh ingredients in a frozen form for your own setting. Now you can see the color. The cilantro is blending in very well, adding that green essence to it. Right about now is when you want to add the tomatoes because this is when you can kind of burn down the ingredients and you want to have some hydration. And tomatoes are perfect for hydrating the dish at this point. For color, since we already had the green, I love paprika. And at this point, since we just had the green chilies, red paprika adds a different element to it. And don't worry, you can add a lot of it because it's just color. Of course, for the faint hearted, it would mean a little too much. But for me, it's just adding color and flavor. Once we have the paprika in there, just shake it all about. Make sure you're at medium heat, not too high, not too low. Because what you want to do is make sure that the tomato breaks down and hydrates the whole recipe. Unfortunately, at this day and age, we don't have aromas in cameras and videos. So otherwise, you would be as enticed as myself to be getting into sitting down and eat. So this is the consistency that we need. And hereafter, what we do is put it down on low and make sure we have the eggs nearby and crack them in one by one. So number one, number two, three, and four. And now, after you put the eggs in, make sure you put the gas on high. And this is when the hard work starts. Stir it in, stir it in, and make sure the yolk breaks in very well, evenly, and spreads out all over the place. This is one of the reasons why I love this big spatula, is it helps me cook this really well. I don't have to go, I don't have to go around taking different swipes at the whole thing, and one swipe and you got the whole thing moving around the place. Really easy for stuff which involves pan cooking. After having cooked this for around four to five minutes, you notice, and stirring really hard, you notice this texture is when, it's, when the eggs are granular and the onions have blended in. The aroma is kind of subdued and it's not as strong. This is when you notice that the uh, burji is pretty much done and ready to serve. All right. Steamy and nice, flavorful. And before the pan actually cools down, what you want to do is, as long as it's on high heat, make sure you get some bread and cut it down into half. I would recommend a pow, but I'm not sure if a pow is available or not. Sometime later we'll discuss how to make pow in your house. For now, I would suggest getting a roll of bread. Uh, not a, uh, more like a dinner roll or uh, just a regular roll. And put it back on medium heat and heat it about for a minute or two till you notice the inside of the bread blackening up because you want to get that flavor and a little bit of, uh, of a burnt flavor, just a little bit, not too much, and soak up as much of the, uh, the flavor the bread can. See that a little darkened up? That's perfect. You want it to be a little dark, that's it. The flavor's in there, the color's in there. Flip it back in, get the next one in. Now you got the bread going, all you do is take some cilantro, finely chopped, and just garnish it with it. The aroma just adds something, a fresh uh, attribute to it, because most of the cilantro has been cooked really well, and this aroma gives it a much more fresher uh, outlook to the dish. Now add the bread. And you're ready to go, and now you know what's cooking.
at Yodesh. Thank you.